Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. We are back on the Timber Bridge project today. Well, this is this is technically the pond. Would you look at the grass though? Well, we're going to work on the Timber Bridge project. First thing we got to pick up is the winch and the log arch. Got a buddy Lee coming down on the 755. I brought the ranger down. There's a couple trees we're gonna cut down over there. Step one is to get the running boards milled up that go across the bridge. Then we're gonna try to get the hanging beam that goes underneath the bridge. Then we're gonna try to get all the suspension cables on. We have a lot of work to do and a little bit of time to do it. If you're new to the channel or if you've been with us for a while, let's just get you kind of caught up to speed and everybody on the same page. The Timber Bridge Project is my first timber project. It is a small creek crossing. It's primarily a dry creek, but it does flow a few times a year. This clip here is when we first purchased the property and we we're kind of bush hogging around an abandoned build site. The whole project started off by using our John Deere 755 20 horsepower compact tractor and then my homemade log winch that you see behind the tractor to kind of winch these Alaskan milled beams across. Now later on in the video, I've got two channels coming by today. One is Lee from Lee in the Woods and he's used a mill similar to the size that I'm borrowing currently and has a few tips and tricks. And also John from Upstate Brush Control is gonna stop by and give me a few tips and tricks on our new 372 XP Husqvarna. It doesn't quite go to plan, but it definitely made for some good content. And you guys have to stay tuned to check that out. We made some creek rock foundations on each side of the creek with a little bit of sackcrete reinforcement. And this is pretty close to where we're at now. There's gonna be a few more plank boards on there. But today's goal is to get the rest of the hardware, the running boards on, and quite a bit of milling done. This is a 1977 Jeep CJ7 frame that I kind of rigged up. That's the old belly pin there. You got a 10,000 pound winch, some straps, some leaf spring action, and the 755. Like I mentioned, this was my first welding project. This past winter, I bought a stick welder from Dirt Perfect I taught myself to kind of glob some metal together. I've been using this for a few months now and I kind of know some updates and some things I want to modify on it to make it absolutely perfect. As you can see, the thing is definitely a pain in the butt to hook up. It just doesn't sit very well when it's unhooked. And we definitely have some changes we want to make. So there's going to be some fabrication videos to look forward to this winter. And that includes making a custom grapple for the front of the tractor as well for the complete package of what we're calling micro logging for our property. Overall, it does work really, really well. Just a few minor changes need to be made. So these are the two trees we're after. This one here, which is in really good shape, and that one there, which is in really good shape. The reason they're going right here is for the septic field for the YouTube yacht, which is right through the trees there, has to go. Now the septic field is downhill of these trees, but as much as I hate cutting down good looking good looking timber or hardwoods I really am gonna hate if these things die in the future and a windstorm comes through and blows them down on the mound system that's what the septic system is going to be or if the root system gets into the septic system as well so they kind of have to come down so we don't have issues in the future and they're gonna be great for the bridge <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So this is Lee from Lee in the Woods. Lee's up from New York area, Buffalo, New York, I believe. He happened to be in the area. He came down for the Utility Expo, the big Dirt Perfect meet and greet that had lots of awesome, awesome channels and was an awesome event. There's lots of videos on it, so be sure to search YouTube for it. Unfortunately, I was on shift that day and could not get a shift trade to get off of work, but this was the day prior and I did happen to be off work. He reached out in an email, asked if he could come and help on the property, and I love getting together with other channels, especially with Lee because I knew he had some experience on a smaller mill and he could give me a few pointers on it. There have been lots of guys to offer tips and tricks on mills, but they all have big fancy mills with big fancy options that I don't have, and this isn't even my mill. I'm borrowing it from a friend. It's just kind of nice to work with a guy who operates on a very similar budget-friendly operation that I do. So we're trying to get the running boards out of these, and I need them at least 12 inches wide. And I'm going to like laminate them because the bridge is 24 feet. So I'll do 12 and 12. No. Yeah, 12 and 12, and then a 12 footer and a 6 on each end. And then like glue and bolt it together. So... I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> well, the kink you do have in this one is here. We're kind of laying where it's kinked this way. So if you want the 12 foot width, I think you're going to have to go this way. Oh, I see what it, you're saying. Get it out of this here. Because it's got. You don't have that high. You know, you're going to cut a high point, a low point. You're going to cut in between it. Okay. You're going to be high on that end. Okay. So we need to roll that to the top. Yep, about 90. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is such a common sense thing that I didn't even think of. He showed me here, you can see there's two different size stops on the back. They make short ones and taller ones. The shorter ones are squared off on top, the taller ones are mitered. And he's showing me that if you use the taller ones, it's easier to roll the log. And I, I didn't even think of that. It's such a common sense thing. The shorter ones, it just kind of tries to climb on top of. And then he's showing me how to measure for the pith and how we need to shim the log up to get it level from one end to the other. The pith is the center of the log. It was awesome having Lee there. It really was. These are some pretty common sense things that I didn't even think of, and if it wasn't for him, I'm not sure that I would have. But now it's time to get this log milled down and start getting the running boards. We're trying to get 12 inch wide boards out of this, 12 foot long, that's the goal. Now unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to get 12 inch wide boards out of this particular log, but it does have a really nice grain to it. It is some type of walnut, I believe. It's not a black walnut, but it is some type of walnut. So we decided even though we couldn't get 12 inch boards out of it, we still go ahead and mill it up into slabs, cut them to sh shorter lengths, and go ahead and stack them. Maybe I can use it for some woodworking in the future. But the bottom half of this log, we should be able to get some boards out of, and then we have the other tree we're gonna cut down later in the video when my new to me 372 XP Husqvarna shows up and John from Upstate Brush Control stops by for a visit as well. So this was actually the day after the expo, which I happened to be off a shift as well. And John from Upstate Brush Control happened to be in the area, and he was able to stop by as well, him and his buddy. 
Now, I'm pretty used to just kind of working by myself, and it's kind of nice having an extra set of hands around. And I definitely had a task that was going to be difficult by myself, and it was getting the center beam lifted up and secured underneath the bottom of the bridge. Now, later in the video, you're going to see we take some all thread and some angle iron, and I make some brackets, some saddles that hang down from those arch logs to support it. But just the process of getting this beam up and in place, it was certainly nice having these guys here. Now, if you're not familiar with upstate brush control, John does a lot of mulching. He has some ASV skid steers with some Fecon heads. He also has some 372 Husqvarna XP saws. And it's some pretty great content, just a good, solid, positive attitude, and they always run into challenges, especially when it comes to forestry mulching. What I was excited about is I just purchased a 372 XP. I knew he had some, and I was hoping he could give me a few tips. That's a good chain, though. It didn't quite go to plan, though. Right out of the gate, we realized that the tensioner was missing, and this was just kind of the start of it. It's supposed to be right here. Yeah. Was that eBay? Yeah. It's just like a little silver thing. That yeah. You got I, one on the other saw? Yeah, it'll fit that. You think it will? I don't know. Right. Look at it. Yeah. It's a different style. Yeah. No, no, that might. You think so? Let's try it. Well, we'll try it. Get this out. So you born and raised here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Deflect. That was good. Like that. <laughs> Phillips head. Is that a Phillips? <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll let you fire it up. Make sure she works before we get to this tree, so we don't, you know, we don't, don't, get, we don't get crushed again, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna mail you a box that just says Cleman's Dreams and you can just mulch <laughs> over it with your feet on. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Don't need these. <laughs> it's a gas can. You'll like it. I doubt it. You get two for the jug and one for your hand. It's pretty slick. <laughs> Up. She starts up every time. There you go. That's it. She's done. She's we done, boys. It. We got it. We got it. We don't listen. <laughs> oh my. <sighs> so what else did you want to get done today? What? He grabbed the whole spring and everything. What, he do this for a living? Yeah, he's a chainsaw guy. Well, that's a handy thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorcery. <laughs> it's not. the video before you probably knew that you forgot I got past I didn't get that far into it so something happened <laughs> either I figured it out or... that's amazing Let me put a stick in the ground for me. All right. Here. Maybe. We'll try. Here we are with a new saw and a challenge. Okay. I'm gonna get a lucky start for this one. Oh, no, I'm not. Left. To the left. No, you guys, now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll give you money to cut stuff out. <laughs>
I will also follow it up with, it was just nice having them out in the woods for me using this saw for the first time. Although a 372 isn't that big of a saw, there are definitely much larger saws out there that guys operate day in and day out. For me, for a homesteader, it's the biggest saw I've ran. And although I felt comfortable with it and it felt good in my hands, it was nice having them out there just in case something kind of went sideways. It was awesome having them there that day. They're definitely a great group of guys and you definitely want to go check out Upstate Brush Control. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put up an info card and you'll notice John had his camera out as well, which means there's probably some clips from the property that I didn't post in this video that'll come out on one of his videos at some point in the future. Uh, Lee from Lee Woods was up here earlier in the video. You guys saw that when we cut that tree down. And then John from Upstate Brush Control came down as well. You guys saw that. I voiced a lot of that over because I was kind of more interested in just kind of hanging out and, uh, and talking to him and that kind of stuff than I was making videos. But I wanted to show you what we were up to, so we voiced it over. I do want to show you something, though. Something I was talking to John or pointing out that I had a problem with on that one and had a big problem with on that one. And I'm not used to cutting timber down to mill. I'm used to just kind of getting it down, getting it out of the way, cutting our dead trees down. So this is kind of something new that I didn't really think about. Now on this one over here, so I had that smaller Mark 120 saw, little 38cc saw. You can see how far my bar went through. See how big and thick this hinge is. And I wasn't able, I didn't do a good job of keeping up with that hinge as it started to fall. And what happened, you saw in the video, it split real bad right there. And what that means, as far as milling goes, it means I missed out on about a four or five foot section of log, which is kind of a bummer. I thought I'd be better off on this one, running that 372, but I ran into the same problem. And you can see I don't have a lot of hinge left, but it was just enough that it did start to pull on me. I don't know if I need to keep up with that hinge more as it goes, or if I need to step my face cut back more. I hate to step my face cut back more than what it is. But it's just something I'm learning. Like I said, I've never really cut trees to mill, so I don't, I, I've never really thought of that aspect of it as far as fiber pull, as far as the tree kind of splitting on its way down. I've never really considered that, but now it's something I have to think of if I'm gonna save stuff to mill. You can see on this one, right here, it tried to do the same thing. Not as severe as the first one, but definitely there. I definitely have to learn some things and techniques with that 372 as well, but I'm excited to do so. I, I love learning new things. And luckily I have some awesome resources. John has a 372, which is why he was able to help me get that thing wound back up. I've got nuts, 319. Pete, who's a hand cutter out in Pennsylvania, he runs a 372. And of course I have logger weight. Now logger weight runs, well, a feller buncher, but he also has a 395 that he used to do a lot of hand cutting with. But He's very familiar with the 372 and can help me if I have any questions as far as tips or tricks go. And I'll probably be reaching out to those fellas because this is definitely felling something for timber to mill versus just falling something to get on the ground. It, it's two different things and uh, I definitely have some things to learn, but I'm excited. See if we can't get the rest of those boards milled up. Let's go ahead and get this one that's on the mill milled up. That way we've got a place to put the ones that we drag up. So I was actually able to get four out of that log, 12 inches wide. You can see how wonky this side is. So today I learned the importance of uh, making sure you put new blades on. I had no blade on, I wasn't really paying attention and it just dug in all the way down that side. But then, you know, you roll the log, I put a new blade on and these all plane pretty nice once you get that new blade on. I'm just learning things. We're all learning things together.
So that is all the running boards. We've got eight of them here. You can see these bottom ones, how bad that wave is. That's driving me crazy, but it'll be okay on the bridge. We got eight of them here. I need to call Clint. Uh, if you don't know, this is actually my buddy's sawmill. He's letting me borrow. I need to call Clint. He wanted all the first cuts for firewood, and he let him know we got a trailer load of firewood because once that goes out to the bridge, we're going to reorganize this and get it all set up so we can start milling some of the timber over there. There's a goat barn slash chicken coop. Pretty excited about that. But now that that's done, let's run down there and see if we can't get a good start on the brackets that's going to hold that beam up that John, Upstate Brush Control, help us get there. that didn't mess up the threads it should be okay yeah about as easy as I thought it'd go
They are tree climbing experts over there right now. Thank you. Hey, Dad. Hi, hey, kiddo. Is this how far I can go? Um, you can come all the way across now if you want. Here? Yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yep, just grab it. Thank you. That's perfect. That's where I need it. Okay. <laughs> She's trying to she's trying to streamline my tool process because she notices that I lose tools a lot. Yes, when your toddler you says you're unorganized, you're unorganized. I I have no idea what day or afternoon it is on this video, but uh, I do know we're getting daggone close to uh, a good time. We do have a pirate with us today too, so that's something. That's why they make things called cable cutters. But I have a hard time buying one tool, or a tool, for one occasion. It's not on. It's not on? No. It is too white. There we go. YouTube jokes. Because it was all dark. Uh, yeah, they just, they're not made for cutting cable. Oh, but we cut a few strands. The thing about cable cutters, cable cutters bypass, so you get all the strands. A bolt cutter is just designed to put enough pressure on there and the bolt, it normally doesn't cut the bolt, it normally puts enough pressure that it splits the bolt and breaks it. Not really made for cutting cable, but by golly, we're getting close, aren't we? There we go. There we go. <laughs> I can't tell you because I still don't remember. I just see them alone there. I know the way there. I right. know the way where the where my me where my pile of animals are. But you can't tell them. It's top secret. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's top secret. My animals, my am, my my other animals. Kid. You're not even a real pirate. No. All day you've been pretending. Yeah. I thought I was hanging out with a real pirate all day. Tell me. She got me. You got me good? Oh dear. <laughs> oh no. What time I will stop it is Oh, are you okay, Dad? Yeah, luckily I got this cable installed. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Lifted that up. Maybe that theory is going to work out. What? I don't put a lot of pressure on it yet, but it, it did lift it. What? Now, can we drive the summer thing over here? Oh, not yet. We got a lot more to do. Mm. But we're close. I probably said when we're done outside at our house, we will watch a show. You're right. Let's go watch a show. You ready? Yeah. I kind of want like a grilled cheese, too. You hungry? You're not hungry? Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. I'm always hungry. <laughs>
make it easier. Oh, there we go. That's just not gonna cut it, but. An awesome subscriber named Tom sent these ratchet straps in. Look at this. They rewind themselves, which is pretty cool. Self stores, everything. Huh? That's handy. Oh, there's some pressure. I don't know if you guys are using the jet powered leaf blower but uh it's a heck of an option i'm i'm telling you the chalk pop off of the string and go into the wood.
So we're on the bottom side right now, and we're getting ready to we're getting ready to put the side by side on there to show you how she acts. These turned out fantastic. Now there's some odds and ends we gotta do at another time in the future, like trim the cables, trim these bolts. We still need to tuck point that. Still need to tuck point that. Obviously, we have some more bark debarking or bark removal that we have to do. You saw me put the anchors in up there, one, two, three, four, in the concrete on each side. I went ahead and did that. Figured it'd be easier to get the hammer drill in now than after the board's on. But I don't have the brackets made that are gonna go on there. But you can see there's plenty of room for me to get up in here, slide those black brackets on, and tighten them down. So we should be good on that. I did put a little membrane right here between this beam and that, and then this will all get stained like the rest of the bridge will get stained. But I put that membrane there for just a little bit of a little bit of extra protection where that contact point is. Same thing, cable trim. Trim that all thread off, make it look nice and even. Now, I'm not an engineer, and you guys know that. And if you want to know what I've done wrong on this bridge, check out the comment section. Somebody's there for sure already. But here's the general idea. Load bearing on the end and on the end. And of course, we have the two runners down the middle. And then we have an arch log on each side. This little saddle that comes down and underneath and adds a little bit of extra support in the middle of the bridge. The cable holding tension between that end and that end. So as that pulls down, if that arch tries to spread, that cable holds it back from spreading. And in theory, since it comes down and under that, as it pushes out, it'll want to stretch that cable, which should provide a little bit of lift. I'm not an engineer. That might not work at all. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going with. I'll give you a tour up top. If you're wondering where it goes coming off this end, this will all get filled in with rocks. We have uh, a plentiful bountiful rock harvest this year got a bunch of these all over the property we'll fill that in with rocks and push some fill in there you saw me cut that one tree down then we're going to head this way up the side of this hill these trees right here that's all tree of heaven they're invasive trees this little group this cluster here those will all come down the trail will continue on this way pretty open right through here And we'll keep on coming here. And you see this little rock ledge right here? We'll hop up right about here. Come right down below the bottom of this rock ledge, or right along the edge of this rock edge, rock face. This little fella's gonna go. And you can see there's a break in that rock face right here, where it's gonna shoot on up and around. And then that way, oops, that way we will be up on top of this big flat area. And then we'll make some more trails back out further that way that go all the way to the Hoosier National Forest. There you can see the bridge there. So instead of shooting straight up this thing, up a steep hill, we'll just kind of meander along the side and work our way up and around. As far as finish on the bridge, stain, some kind of stain. We we're looking at like a tinted stain, a colored stain, but I mean, that wood is gorgeous. We might just do like a Thompson water sealer, just a whole bunch of oil on there and, and do it that way. Let it soak in real good so we can still see, see some of that timber. I spilt a little bit of bar oil up here and uh, daggone it if this wood just isn't gorgeous. So we may do like a Thompson water sealer type thing and really bring the color out in this thing. I don't know, we'll see. We'll get there when we get there. I wanna get that done before it gets too cold this winter to apply it. So it'll be in the next few weeks, but uh, this is a pretty big step. I guess, let's put the side-by-side -side on there. I was worried, like, is it gonna hold? Is it not gonna hold? I have, I have zero concerns at this point, but just to show you, and because we need a good thumbnail, let's put it on there. Looks great overall. You can see we're just hanging off at rain board a little bit. I was trying to get the wheel space for the tractor too, but if we do the railing, remember we were talking about doing a railing, extending that way straight and extending this way straight so that you're forced to come on and off the bridge straight. I don't think we'll have any issues at all. 
Let me, let me hop. Let me walk around the side here. Test my balance out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like I said, we'll do some kind of cable railing system down the side in case, you know, the event of that crazy day, but uh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. This is a pretty big, pretty big moment. You know, I don't know. It's my first timber project. You know, some people are like, hey, I think I'm gonna get into uh, timber woodworking. Yeah, I'll make a bench. Yeah, bench. <laughs> it looks so good. Oh, dad, got it, bud. Now, obviously, I can't go much further today. That's kind of a drop off, but uh, we're getting much closer. I feel like, oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I mean, it didn't even, yeah, I mean, there's hardly anything on that. I got to back off, but it is what it is. I need to put, I need to put the camera down underneath here somewhere so I can, when I back off, I can go back and look at the footage and see if it does anything. Um, let's do that real quick. I answered a lot of questions on the last video. One question I didn't really directly address is why. Well, one, to get to the other side. I mean, why wouldn't you? And then uh, two, I just wanted a good challenge. Like I said, my first timber project. I wanna learn how to use a sawmill. Well, let's mill some timber up to build a bridge. I wanna learn how to use a pro level saw. Let's have John from Upstate Brush Control come up uh, give me some tips and tricks on it at 372. Why not? Let's do it. Uh, we had Lee from Lee in the Woods come up and give me some tips and tricks on that size mill. It's just great. I like learning. I like pushing myself. I like a challenge. And uh, building a bridge for your first timber project, I think it fits the bill. Other things I'm learning how to do, work with a five-year-old on your projects. Um, give you a few tips. Lower your productivity expectations. Make it more about making the memories and less about making the bridge and you'll actually get something done. We had a good time. They have a staffing shortage at her uh, preschool right now. So she's been with grandma and me this week and she's been more patient than I have if I'm being honest. That's all I have. As far as what to come on the channel, tomorrow we're actually headed out of town. We're going on vacation. I'm taking a, a quick week break from YouTube. I have nothing for you next week and I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm really not that sorry at all. I know you guys look forward to the channel and I look forward to posting the videos and reading your comments, but we all need a break from time to time and uh, I'm taking mine next week. We're headed down to Gatlinburg. It's going to be a great time, but when we come back, we're coming back strong. I don't know if you saw my Instagram post, but I bought this. That is an old bell tower from a church. I'm sorry, from an old schoolhouse in Evansville, Indiana. And I went and paid for it, and we've got to pick it up next week. The day we get back from vacation, we're going to pick that up. That will be the next video you see. Then we are going right into installing the septic system for the YouTube yacht, a couple work days for Mike, and then right into pouring the concrete floor at the bottom of the YouTube yacht, and then milling all the timber for the chicken coop and goat barn. So we're coming back strong when we come back from a little YouTube vacation. I will say this, if you guys need something to watch while I, uh, I take my little week hiatus, go check out John from Upstate Brush Control. His channel is awesome. He's got a great attitude. He's got great content. It's just worth watching. And go support Lee. I can remember a bunch of you are with me from before I had a thousand subscribers. I think Lee is under 100 right now. He's into YouTube. He needs your feedback. He needs your construction, constructive help on how to build a channel. Go do that. He's a great guy. I'm glad he came out and I think you guys can help him the way you helped me. That's really all I have to say. It's been a while since I've had the drone out. Let's finish it off with a good old fashioned drone flight, a little bit of music at the end. And uh, I'll see you guys in a week. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.